Hey everyone, I'm DT10, and in this video I'll be showing you how to build the 4th Doctor's TARDIS in vanilla Minecraft. This includes the exterior, first interior, and then the secondary interior too. Hope you enjoy the video. So to start with, this is the exterior that we will be building in this tutorial. Now it's quite similar to some of my other exteriors, however I'll get to the main inspirations for this once we start building it. And then as you walk inside, this is the first interior that we will be building. So this is from some of the original 4th Doctor series, it's pretty simple, it's a lot like the other classic ones. However if you're not aware, the 4th Doctor actually had a secondary TARDIS interior. So if we head down this corridor, which we will also be building, and through this door, then you will end up in the secondary console room. So it's quite simple, however it's very very different to what I'm used to, so this actually took quite a long time to design. Anyway, we'll get to all of that later. For now, let's begin by building the exterior. So to start off for the interior, you're going to dig one, two blocks down and place a command block facing up. Now in this command block, you're going to put TP at P and then the coordinates of where you want to build your interior. Now for me, that is just going to be 3000 and then you want to put one block above where your floor level is. So for me, that's 102, then again at 3000. Now this will obviously be very different for you. It's wherever you want to build your interior, whatever works for you. Click done and then place a block of lapis on top like that and another one next to it with a dark oak pressure plate on top like that. You then want to get your lapis once again and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way around a horseshoe shape like that. Next, you want to bring this entire shape up by another three blocks. That's one, two, three, like this. So in total, it should be four blocks tall. You then want to go one, two, three, four, like that. And then with your iron bars, you want to go one, two, three, four, like that in those holes there. You then want to place a dark oak door like that. This is your basic TARDIS shape complete. Next up, we're going to be constructing the light. So you need to dig one, two blocks down like that in here, place some white stained glass there, a shroom light on top like that, and another white stained glass with an iron trap door on top like that. Next up, you're going to need your dark oak signs. And on this block here, you're going to go down one line, all in capital letters, you're going to write police. Then on this line, you're gonna go down again and go public cool like this, with the first two letters being capital. Finally, on the last, line across like this you're going to put box all in capital letters once again and then you're going to grab some white dye and dye them all white and also some glow ink sacks like this then if you control middle click all three of these signs then you can just place these all the way around the top of your TARDIS on all four sides like this then to finish off your TARDIS exterior, you're just going to need another dark oak sign to place on this block here. You're going to write police telephone on the first line like this. Then on the second line, you're going to put free in capital letters. Then for use of on the third line down like this. And then public at the bottom. Click done and then do the same thing we did here, which is to grab some white dye and dye it white. Then use your glow ink sack to finish it off and make it glow. And that is your TARDIS exterior complete for the fourth Doctor. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about my inspiration for this TARDIS. So straight away, I sincerely apologise to all of those Classic Who fans out there. I've never watched Classic Who, so naturally this isn't going to be 100% accurate. All I could do is use the images I found online, and there were a lot of them. You see, the issue with Classic Who is that the props were often different. The props that they used were often very, very different, depending on the episode and on the series, so there's lots of different versions of the fourth Doctor's exterior. So what I do if there's lots of different versions of a TARDIS is I kind of grab my favourite elements elements from all of these TARDISes and squish them together basically. So I'll show on screen now the images I use, but for example you've got the image on the left which is the texture for the lapis, that's where I got the lapis texture. You've then got the orange light which is why I use shroom light for the light up there. And yeah, I kind of blend them all together and this is what we've ended up with. But now if you go inside your exterior, we now are ready to start building the interior. Right, so to start with, you want to be standing on the exact block where you want to build the exterior. For me, that's 3000, 101, 3000. So once you know you're fully aligned, you need to go one block back, dig one block underneath, and then one to the net left, and put some command blocks in the holes like that, facing upwards. Now, this is assuming that you've gone for one block above. So like I said, I put mine as 102, and that's just to make it easier as we're going to be building a floor. So it means you don't have to break and then place the blocks, you can just place them on top like that. So if you didn't do that, then you will have to dig two blocks down and place your command block. 
Now, in these command blocks, you're going to put a very similar command that you did for the exterior. You're going to put TP at P and then the coordinates of your exterior this time. So if you go over to your exterior, then what you need to do is you need to enter like this, but don't stand on the pressure plate. Make sure you're on the same block as the door. Go as far forward as you can and as centered as you can and press F3. Then write the exact coordinates, including all the decimal points like this in the chat. And then once you're done, press enter and then write exactly what you put down in the chat into your command block. Right, so apologies this has been a bit confusing so far, but the reason we need to be so precise is because if you place two white concrete on top like that with a heavy weighted pressure plate on both blocks, once you activate these command blocks, you will teleport to this exact location. Meaning that if you just hold forward, you can effectively just go straight through the door. And it makes the bigger on the inside effect really, really seamless. So we don't want you to teleport out here because obviously it doesn't make much sense. And we don't want you to teleport back onto the pressure plate and make a never-ending paradox. But yeah, apologies if this has been a little bit confusing with all the command blocks and stuff so far. Now all we're going to be doing is building. So next up, you're going to need some bone blocks and some temporary blocks. These can be any blocks you want as they aren't actually going to be showing in the build. So to start with, you're going to place two bone blocks on the side of these pressure plates like that. Then you're going to go one, two, three, four up with temporary blocks behind and place some bone blocks on like that. And this is the exact reason why we place these temporary blocks. We don't want this texture here. We want the top, which means we have to place them off of blocks behind so that we get that texture. Now you can destroy the blocks behind if you want to. Personally, I wouldn't as like I said, they don't show. But if you're being conservative for resources, you're building in survival, for example, then you might want to consider doing that. Anyway, once you've got these six bone blocks in place, we're going to be creating the basic wall shape. So this is kind of like a door, and now we're going to be moving on to the entirety of the walls of this TARDIS. So to start with, you're going to come to the left-hand side of your door and come out one, two, three blocks like this, and then another three on the other side, creating another block of six. You're then going to go another two up like this, and then do the same thing across the doorway like that. Continuing on from the left-hand side, you need to come one, two, three out with your temporary blocks like that then place one two three four bone blocks up like that you're going to do another one of these just behind so you come out one two and then go one two three four with your bone blocks replicate this again directly next to it so you should have a block of four then a block of eight and now we're going to do another block of four so go one two with your temporary blocks a bone block facing like that two three four and this is the shape you should have now continuing on we're just going to start rounding this wall off so you're going to come out another two go one two three four and create another block of eight like this and then we're going to actually start curving it back in so you're going to replicate this entire shape again on this side basically so you go so you're going to go from this side of the block sorry like this one two three four just like we did over here then you're going to replicate this block of eight and this block of four in exactly the same shape so you should now have something that looks like this. You've got four, eight, four, eight, four, eight, four. We're then actually going to make this four block on the end an eight block just by adding another four bone blocks. I don't know how many times I've said block in that sentence, but it was definitely a lot. And then we're actually going to curve it round once again like this and make another block of four bone blocks there. So in this space, we're actually going to be doing something a little different. So first of all, you are actually going to have to worry about your temporary blocks. You're going to destroy them and then place one, two, three, four bone blocks on the back, making sure you have this seamless texture. But then I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap as we'll be placing a piston door here later. So if you want, what you can do now is place the blocks of the piston door. So we're going to come one, two, three out like that and then go one, two, three, and then do the same again here. One, two, three, creating a block of six. Then destroy the temporary blocks behind because there will actually be a corridor here. And then we're going to replicate this wall on the other side here. So the area for your piston door should now look something like this. We're then going to continue this wall. So you're going to make another block of four here like that. Then you're going to curve it round once again by doing another L shape of three. Then going one, two, three, four upwards like that. 
then you may notice we're pretty much level with the other wall here. So we're going to be replicating this exact same shape. So you're going to come out by another two blocks. Go one, two, three, four, and the same on the other side to create a block of eight. And now you will notice you're completely equal. So all we're going to do on this side is exactly the same. So we're going to go a block of four, a block of eight, a block of four, a block of eight, and a block of four to finish it off. So you should end up with something that looks like this. It's exactly exactly the same as the other side. Now you will notice there's a gap here and all we need to do is just finish that off by going one, two, three, four with bone blocks like that. And that means your wall is complete that we are finally free from the really annoying bone block placement. Next up, we're going to do the floor. This is very, very simple. You're literally just gonna fill this entire area in with white concrete blocks like this. So this is your floor complete. It's very, very basic. It's all filled in apart from these two blocks here as they will be left for the piston door later. Anyway, next up, we're going to be filling in the roof. So to start with, you're going to need your smooth port stairs and all the way around on the fourth block up, you're just going to make a rim like this. Then once you get to this area here, you're just going to place two smooth quartz slabs like that, another two on top like that, and then some smooth quartz stairs all the way along the top like that, and continue your pattern round. Now, once you get to this bit, you will obviously have to change direction. I recommend changing direction on this block here. Basically, you just need to go in the exact same direction as the bone blocks. Now, obviously, once you get to a corner like this, it's a little bit difficult. I prefer the look of this one being aligned with the back. However, you can do it like this if you want to. Anyway, like I said, just continue the pattern all the way around the exact same way the bone blocks are facing, and you should get back to where you started, and that is our smooth quartz rim complete. Now, all you need to do is grab some smooth quartz slabs or blocks, but slabs is kind of more efficient, and then then you just need to go all the way along the top like this, creating your roof. Right, now, once you finish off that roof with your smooth quartz slabs, you're going to notice a very obvious issue, and that is that it is currently incredibly, incredibly dark. Now, if you're doing this in survival mode, obviously just without the command blocks, then you can do some hidden lighting. You can do that however you want. You can do the sea lanterns and carpets trick, which I've done in lots of previous videos. However, if you're like me and you're building it in creative, then all you need to do is grab yourself some light blocks. So to do that, you're gonna write the following command, slash give at self and then light. Once you've done that, it will give you some lights like this. And that is pretty much it. Now you can place these as much as you want. As these are really interesting new blocks that mean you can actually just go through them. So you can place these wherever you want. They will not show up and players can just walk right through them. Next up, what we're going to be building is the console. So you're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six blocks out and place a block of quartz like that from the left hand side pressure plate. Then go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way around in a square shape like this with quartz slabs. Once you've done that, just place a block of red stained glass in the middle as your time rotor, and that is technically your console complete. Now, I always like to decorate these. You can just leave it plain. You can decorate it how I'm going to decorate it, or you can decorate it with your own redstone components and stuff. However, I'm not actually going to give you a tutorial for the decoration of this, as this is a very long tutorial. I don't want to spend too long on little bits that don't particularly matter, saying as we have an entire new console room to build later. So once you're happy with the decoration of your console, we're then actually going to be doing for the first time in any of my TARDIS tutorials, some redstone. So I know I could just do it with command locks and stuff, and I know I could make it look a lot better, but I've actually gone for a simple piston door into this corridor, purely because I kind of want to keep it as survival friendly as possible, minus the big on the inside effect, of course. So what we're going to be doing is just constructing a very basic two by two piston door that opens these four rounds up here. So to start with, you're going to come under here like this, dig out one, two, three, four, five, six blocks like that, and you're going to fill it all in with redstone dust. Once you've got that, you're going to dig out these two blocks here on either side and fill them in with redstone dust, then place a redstone torch on these blocks here as well. Then all you need to do is place any block on top of this redstone torch and place some redstone dust on top like that, then place one, two pistons on top like that. Do the same on the other side, and that is literally your piston door complete. So all we need to do now is just place two blocks of light blue 
terracotta with two stone pressure plates on top like that so that you can walk through it we're then going to place a some two blocks of polished black stone like that with black stone pressure plates on top and two extra blocks of light blue terracotta so that you can just walk across and then from whatever side you want you can just walk through like this so first of all you're going to be constructing the floor for this tardis so you're going to come out one two three four five six blocks like that fill in the other side of course and then i have to admit i kind of lied earlier we've got to a little bit more bone block placement but it's very very simple you just need to create a line of temporary blocks behind like this directly off of these pistons and then one more on top and then just place a load of bone blocks on this side and that is the walls for your corridor complete however you do actually have to destroy all of the temporary blocks on this side here as we are actually going to build the secondary tardis room here in just a second then all you need to do to finish this off is place two blocks of black concrete here then another one two three four five six blocks behind like that fill these sides in as well and then just place two iron doors like that with two bone blocks facing upwards like that then just place a load of smooth quartz slabs all the way across the top as your roof and if you want to you can even place some light blocks or hidden lighting as it does get a little bit dark in here once again oh I i'm really sorry i messed up the scale a little bit here instead of being one two three four five six seven blocks it actually needs to be eight so by just by moving this bit back one block it should fix everything yeah really really sorry about that but it is important for later so you shouldn't have one two three four five six seven eight blocks from all the way over there at that piston door to these back doors here anyway next up we're going to making the secondary tardis console room so what you're first of all going to do is count one two three four blocks from the back like this and then on the fourth block here you're actually going to destroy these two like this what you're next up going to do is place some light blue terracotta here and then you're actually going to place an iron door on this block here facing like that you will notice it is one block out and that will be very important later anyway next up we're going to place a stone button on top like that so that you can use the door then a stone pressure plate behind like this another block of light blue terracotta here and then simply a dark oak door on this block here now obviously this door looks a little bit strange but trust me it all it does all have a purpose so in the show this is very much a white door to fit with this white theme and then the back of this white door is actually brown and wood to fit with that theme over there for the secondary console room which we'll be constructing in a second it is a very dark wood theme however obviously it would look a little bit weird to just have a dark oak door here and to just have an iron door on the other side so i thought why not have both doors however what with it being an iron door it needs some sort of redstone contraption here to activate it so all i've got is a double door system where there's a pressure plate you walk through and there's a stone button on the other side yeah i know I, i've somehow even managed to make a door complicated anyway with the complicated door out of the way it's finally time to start on the secondary console room so first of all what you're going to need is some stripped dark oak log and you go one two three four five six seven eight nine on this side and one two three four five six seven eight nine ten on this side like that creating a full wall with this texture here like the bone blocks it's very important that you don't get this one as it obviously looks very very different and these are acting as our wooden roundels you're then going to go an extra one all the way across the top you will have to place some temporary blocks behind off of these slabs next up you're going to need a stripped birch log which you're just going to place here and a stripped crimson stem sorry that you're going to place on this block here once again you're going to grab your stripped dark oak log however this time you're going to go one two three four five with this texture here so this is kind of like a pillar in the corners of the room next up with your temporary blocks once again off of this block here that we used in the piston door you're going to go one two three four five six and carry this on by another three blocks and then once you've got all these temporary blocks in place you guessed it you're just going to fill almost all of this in with your stripped dark oak log on this side however once you've done this bit here you're actually going to leave an eight block gap and then go one, two, three, four up on the other side like this. This is because we're actually going to be placing a door here now. So once you've got this, just destroy the temporary blocks in the background as this is actually going to be a door. So next up, you're going to need some dark oak slabs and go one, two across like that. And then some dark oak stairs across two like that as well with some spruce trap doors like this. So two on either side. Once you've got that, still with trap doors, but this time oak trap doors, you're going to go one, two, three on that side 
side and one two three on the other side as well next up you're going to go into here and then place black concrete here black concrete all the way across the back here just drawing those temporary blocks as well two sea lanterns across the top like this and then just finish up the back with black concrete as well now you're actually going to need some command blocks and some pressure plates so what you're going to do is place two polished blackstone pressure plates on these blocks here however this actually needs to act as another door so if you go all the way across to here and into your tardis and then if you destroy these two blocks you can actually get this exact same command block by control middle clicking it like that and what this means is when you place it down you will get the exact same command in without having to type it all again so fix up that hole then go all the way over to your secondary console room and then all you need to do is go underneath i think it's these two blocks place the command blocks and then as soon as you step on here yeah you'll be teleported directly into your exterior and it basically acts as a second door Anyway, we're now going to be continuing on with the walls. So first of all, you're going to do another one of these pillars over here. So you're going to go one, two, three, four, five blocks up. Then continuing on with the roundels, we're going to go one, two, but then we're actually going to place a warped stem here and then another strip dark oak log on top like that. Then we're going to be doing another one of these. So you're going to go one, two up like that. And then you're actually going to do a crimson stem this time with another two strip dark oak logs on top like that. And now we're actually going to be soon doing something a little bit different. So still with your strip dark oak logs, you're going to go one, two, three across the top. So you get this texture here. Then you're going to come out to this block here and go one, two, three. Destroy these ones at the back and then go one, two, three like this so that you get this texture at the bottom. We're then going to continue on for the other two roundel bits here. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four. And now we're going to come back to this middle bit and kind of decorate it a little bit. So this is kind of like a monitor at the back of the TARDIS. So you're going to go one, two with your dark oak trapdoors on this side, one, two on this side, and then one, two at the front here like that. Then with the new tinted glass block, you're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. And this is where your temporary blocks kind of become important as we don't want that pink there. So you're just going to destroy that one and replace it with that and then go one, two, three across the top as well, just to make it look a little bit cleaner. Then you're simply just going to go and grab some black concrete and some sea lanterns and mix them in however you want. So I kind of do something a little bit like this for mine. However, maybe, you know, maybe that looks a little bit too straight. So you add an extra sea lantern there. There. Yeah, that, that looks pretty good. I'm kind of happy with that. You just mix them in in that area however you want. This is kind of meant to look a little bit like stars in the night sky or whatever's really being displayed on that monitor. Anyway, finally over here on this wall, it's going to be very, very simple. You're just going to do another pillar here. One, two, three, four. Uh, four, sorry, five, and then another pillar over here, one, two, three, four, five, and fill this entire space in just with your dark oak roundels. So it should look something like this once you're done, and that is all four walls of your secondary console room complete. It's definitely a very, very square room indeed. Anyway, next up you're going to need some dark oak slabs, and you're going to go all the way across the top like this, all the way around, including on that bit as well, and just create an extra rim of dark oak slabs by the way which is why we need to continue these five blocks instead of four because now we're going to be going along the uh top like this with your dark oak slabs once again to create our roof so yeah as soon as you fill your entire roof in with dark oak slabs like that your tardis should now look like this now we're going to be putting in a floor as well and for that you're just going to be using brown terracotta and once again very very simple stuff you're just going to go all the way along the floor with brown terracotta Right, now the great thing about this TARDIS is it's kind of naturally lighted just by these two sea lanterns. So you don't actually really need to light anything up. I know it's a little bit dark over here, but that kind of adds to the overall effect, if I'm honest. It is a very dark TARDIS. Right, next up, we're going to be building the console in the middle of the room here. So what you're going to do is come to this door, then go one, two, three, four blocks out. And on this fourth block, you're going to place a block of stripped dark oak log once again. Then you're going to go one, two, three, four with dark oak slabs and an extra one on top like that. This is your console. I know it's, it's a bit of a weird shape. It's very small. 
Then you're going to place a stone button on this one, a bit of redstone dust clicked once to make it look like this little dot here, a light grey carpet on the block at the back, and then a crimson button on that side like this. Next up, you're actually going to grab some lightning rods and then some brown carpet. And you go one, two with your lightning rods with brown carpet on top like that. Another two over here. And then exactly the same thing on this corner as well over here. This is kind of the best I could do for the railing that you've got. Obviously, it's not ideal because you can't go through here. You've kind of got to either jump over or if you want, you can go all the way around to use this. But it is all fully accessible, so there shouldn't be too many issues. Right, now to be honest, that's pretty much up done. There's really nothing else to add to this TARDIS. However, there is one little detail that I absolutely love, and it's an invisible eye armor stand. So it's a little bit complicated and obviously not able to do it in survival mode, but it's a little detail of the Doctor's scarf. So if you haven't seen the fourth Doctor's scarf, it's really something that defines him. It's this massive multicolored star scarf that he wears around his neck, and then it's also shown to be hanging on these railings in the TARDIS in a couple of shots. So like I said, we're going to achieve this by using an invisible armor stand. So I won't really bother explaining the command we're going to be doing. Uh, you can just copy and paste it from the description, but basically you've just got to stand directly in between these two carpets here, then use the command in the description, click enter, and you have actually got an armor stand here. You can place pants on it, and that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be placing leather pants on. However, this doesn't look very colorful. It does look like it's hanging, which is pretty cool, and if you look closer, you can kind of almost see the like natural curve of the scarf. However, it's not very colorful, so you can choose what whatever color you want for this as unfortunately you can't dye the leather pants multiple different colors you can't do multi-colored stuff but if you just chuck some dye and then the leather pants in a crafting table like that i've just gone for red you can chuck them on like that and i think it looks pretty cool so that is our secondary console room done and that is our entire tardis done so I really, really hope you like this build. It's certainly been an interesting one to design. Going from this very sort of clean white theme of his first in uh, interior that he had, then going along this corridor and then suddenly entering into a very different looking TARDIS indeed. A very sort of dark, dingy, wood, brown kind of feel in here. And then having a second door that leads out to the exterior was also something I've never done before. Yeah, it was a really, really interesting one to design and I really hope you like the build. So yeah, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like or comment. And if you'd like to see more tutorials like this, then please subscribe. But I've been DT10 and I will see you in the next video.